The Western Sahara is a disputed territory in the Marib region of North Africa, bordered by Morocco to the north, Algeria to the extreme northeast, Mauritania to the east and south, and the Atlantic Ocean to the west. Its surface area amounts to 266,000 square kilometers. It is one of the most sparsely populated territories in the world, mainly consisting of desert flatlands. The population is estimated at just over 500,000, of whom nearly 40% live in El Alain, the largest city in Western Sahara. Occupied by Spain since the late 19th century, the Western Sahara has been on the United Nations list of non-self-governing territories since 1963 after a Moroccan demand. It is the most populous territory on that list, and by far the largest in area. In 1965, the UN General Assembly adopted its first resolution on Western Sahara, asking Spain to decolonize the territory. One year later, a new resolution was passed by the General Assembly requesting that a referendum be held by Spain on self-determination. In 1975, Spain relinquished the administrative control of the territory to a joint administration by Morocco and Mauritania. A war erupted between those countries and the Zarawi National Liberation Movement, the Polisario Front, which proclaimed the Zarawi Arab Democratic Republic with a government in exile in Tinth, Algeria. Mauritania withdrew in 1979, and Morocco eventually secured effective control of most of the territory including all the major cities and natural resources. Since a United Nations-sponsored ceasefire agreement in 1991, two-thirds of the territory has been controlled by Morocco and the remainder by the SADR, strongly backed by Algeria. Internationally, countries such as the United States and Russia have taken a generally ambiguous and neutral position on each side's claims, and have pressed both parties to agree on a peaceful resolution. Both Morocco and Polisario have sought to boost their claims by accumulating formal recognition, essentially from African, Asian, and Latin American states in the developing world. The Polisario Front has won formal recognition for SADR from 82 states, and was extended membership in the African Union. Morocco has won recognition or support for its position from several African governments and from most of the Arab League. In both instances, Recognitions have, over the past two decades, been extended and withdrawn according to changing international trends. As of 2006, no other member state of the United Nations has recognized Moroccan sovereignty over Western Sahara. History Early History The earliest known inhabitants of the Western Sahara were the Berber people of the Gautulian tribes. Depending on the century, Roman era sources describe the area as inhabited by Gautulian Autolols or the Gautulian Doradi tribes. Berber heritage is still evident from regional and place name toponymy, as well as from tribal names. Other early inhabitants of the Western Sahara may be the Bafour and later the Sira and some Arabian tribes. The Bafour were later replaced or absorbed by Berber speaking populations, which eventually merged in turn with the migrating Beni Hassan Arabian tribe. The arrival of Islam in the 8th century played a major role in the development of the Marib region. Trade developed further, and the territory may have been one of the routes for caravans, especially between Marrakesh and Tombaktu in Mali. In the 11th century, the Maghlarabian tribes settled in Morocco. Towards the end of the Almohad's rule, the Beni Hassan tribe were called by the local ruler of the Sous Tequela rebellion. They settled in the Sousksaws and controlled such cities as Tarudant. During the Merinid rule, the Beni Hassan rebelled but were defeated by the Sultan and escaped beyond the Segulia el Hamra dry river. The Beni Hassan then were at constant war with the Lamchin and nomadic Berbers of the Sahara. Over roughly five centuries, through a complex process of acculturation and mixing seen elsewhere in the Marib and North Africa, some of the indigenous Berber tribes mixed with the Maghlarabian tribes and formed a culture unique to Morocco and Mauritania. Spanish Province After an agreement among the European colonial powers at the Berlin Conference in 1884 on the division of spheres of influence in Africa, Spain seized control of the Western Sahara and established it as a Spanish colony. After 1939 and the outbreak of World War II, this area was administered by Spanish Morocco. As a consequence, Ahmed Belbakar Haskuri, the chief of cabinet, 
General Secretary of the Government of Spanish Morocco, cooperated with the Spanish to select governors in that area. The Saharan lords who were already in prominent positions, such as the members of Mour el Ainain family, provided a recommended list of candidates for new governors. Together with the Spanish High Commissioner, Belbaco selected from this list. During the annual celebration of Muhammad's birthday, these lords paid their respects to the caliph to show loyalty to the Moroccan monarchy. As time went by, Spanish colonial rule began to unravel with the general wave of decolonization after World War II. Former North African and Sub-Saharan African possessions and protectorates gained independence from European powers. Spanish decolonization proceeded more slowly, but internal political and social pressures for it in mainland Spain built up towards the end of Francisco Franco's rule. There was a global trend towards complete decolonization. Spain began rapidly to divest itself of most of its remaining colonial possessions. By 1974 a Euro 75 the government issued promises of a referendum on independence in the Western Sahara. At the same time, Morocco and Mauritania, which had historical and competing claims of sovereignty over the territory, argued that it had been artificially separated from their territories by the European colonial powers. Algeria, which also bordered the territory, viewed their demands with suspicion, as it also had a long-running rivalry with Morocco. After arguing for a process of decolonization to be guided by the United Nations, the Algerian government under Harari Bouma copyright Dia NNE in 1975 committed to assisting the Polisario Front, which opposed both Moroccan and Mauritanian claims and demanded full independence of the Western Sahara. The Union attempted to settle these disputes through a visiting mission in late 1975, as well as a verdict from the International Court of Justice. It acknowledged that Western Sahara had historical links with Morocco and Mauritania, but the population of this territory possessed the right of self-determination. On November 6, 1975 Morocco initiated the Green March into Western Sahara. 350,000 unnamed Moroccans converged on the city of Tafa in southern Morocco and waited for a signal from King Hassan II of Morocco to cross the border in a peaceful march. A few days before, on October 31, Moroccan troops invaded Western Sahara from the northwest. Demands for independence. In the waning days of General Franco's rule, and after the Green March, the Spanish government signed a tripartite agreement with Morocco and Mauritania as it moved to transfer the territory on November 14, 1975. The accords were based on a bipartite administration, and Morocco and Mauritania each moved to annex the territories, with Morocco taking control of the northern two-thirds of Western Sahara as its southern provinces, and Mauritania taking control of the southern third is Tyrus al -Abilia. Spain terminated its presence in Spanish Sahara within three months, repatriating Spanish remains from its cemeteries. The Moroccan and Mauritanian annexations were resisted by the Polisario Front, which had gained backing from Algeria. It initiated guerrilla warfare and, in 1979, Mauritania withdrew due to pressure from Polisario, including a bombardment of its capital and other economic targets. Morocco extended its control to the rest of the territory. It gradually contained the guerrillas by setting up the extensive sand berm in the desert to exclude guerrilla fighters. Hostilities ceased in a 1991 ceasefire, overseen by the peacekeeping mission Minaso, under the terms of a UN settlement plan. Stalling of the referendum and settlement plan, the referendum, originally scheduled for 1992, foresaw giving the local population the option between independence or affirming integration with Morocco, but it quickly stalled. In 1997, the Houston Agreement attempted to revive the proposal for a referendum but likewise has hitherto not had success. As of 2010, negotiations over terms have not resulted in any substantive action. At the heart of the dispute lies the question of who qualifies to be registered to participate in the referendum, and, since about the year 2000, Morocco considers that since there is no agreement on persons entitled to vote, a referendum is not possible. Meanwhile, Polisario still insisted on a referendum with independence as a clear option, without offering a solution to the problem of who is qualified to be registered to participate in it. Both sides blame each other for the stalling of the referendum. 
the Polisario has insisted on only allowing those found on the 1974 Spanish census lists to vote, while Morocco has insisted that the census was flawed by evasion and sought the inclusion of members of Zarawi tribes which escaped from Spanish invasion to the north of Morocco by the 19th century. Efforts by the UN special envoys to find a common ground for both parties did not succeed. By 1999 the UN had identified about 85,000 voters, with nearly half of them in the Moroccan-controlled parts of Western Sahara or Southern Morocco, and the others scattered between the Tinf refugee camps, Mauritania and other places of exile. Polisario accepted this voter list, as it had done with the previous list presented by the UN, but Morocco refused and, as rejected voter candidates began a mass appeals procedure, insisted that each application be scrutinized individually. This again brought the process to a halt. According to a NATO delegation, Minaso election observers stated in 1999, as the deadlock continued, that if the number of voters does not rise significantly the odds were slightly on the RASD side. By 2001, the process had effectively stalemated and the UN Secretary General asked the parties for the first time to explore other, third-way solutions. Indeed, shortly after the Houston Agreement, Morocco officially declared that it was no longer necessary to include an option of independence on the ballot, offering instead autonomy. Eric Jensen, who played an administrative role in Minaso, wrote that neither side would agree to a voter registration in which they were destined to lose. Baker Plan as personal envoy of the Secretary General, James Baker visited all sides and produced the document known as the Baker Plan. This was discussed by the United Nations Security Council in 2000, and envisioned an autonomous Western Sahara Authority, which would be followed after five years by the referendum. Every person present in the territory would be allowed to vote, regardless of birthplace and with no regard to the Spanish census. It was rejected by both sides although it was initially derived from a Moroccan proposal. According to Baker's draft, tens of thousands of post-annexation immigrants from Morocco proper would be granted the vote in the Zarawi independence referendum, and the ballot would be split three ways by the inclusion of an unspecified autonomy, further undermining the independence camp. Morocco was also allowed to keep its army in the area and retain control over all security issues during both the autonomy years and the election. In 2002, the Moroccan king stated that the referendum idea was out of date since it cannot be implemented. Polisario retorted that that was only because of the king's refusal to allow it to take place. In 2003, a new version of the plan was made official, with some additions spelling out the powers of the WSA, making it less reliant on Moroccan devolution. It also provided further detail on the referendum process in order to make it harder to stall or subvert. This second draft, commonly known as Baker II, was accepted by the Polisario as a basis of negotiations to the surprise of many. This appeared to abandon Polisario's previous position of only negotiating based on the standards of voter identification from 1991. After that, the draft quickly garnered widespread international support culminating in the UN Security Council's unanimous endorsement of the plan in the summer of 2003. And of the 2000s. Baker resigned his post at the United Nations in 2004. His term did not see the crisis resolved. His resignation followed several months of failed attempts to get Morocco to enter into formal negotiations on the plan, but he met with rejection. The new king, Mohammed VI of Morocco, opposes any referendum on independence, and has said Morocco will never agree to one, we shall not give up one inch of our beloved Sahara, not a grain of its sand. Instead, he proposes, through an appointed advisory body Royal Advisory Council for Saharan Affairs, a self-governing Western Sahara as an autonomous community within Morocco. His father, Hassan II of Morocco, initially supported the referendum idea in principle in 1982, and in signed contracts with Polisario and the UN in 1991 and 1997. No major powers have expressed interest in forcing the issue, however, and Morocco has shown little interest in a real referendum. The Union has put forth no replacement strategy after the breakdown of Baker II, and renewed fighting has been raised as a possibility. 
In 2005, former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan reported increased military activity on both sides of the front and breaches of several ceasefire provisions against strengthening military fortifications. Morocco has repeatedly tried to get Algeria into bilateral negotiations, based on its view of Polisario as the cat's paw of the Algerian military. It has received vocal support from France and occasionally from the United States. These negotiations would define the exact limits of a Western Sahara autonomy under Moroccan rule but only after Morocco's inalienable right to the territory was recognized as a precondition to the talks. The Algerian government has consistently refused, claiming it has neither the will nor the right to negotiate on the behalf of the Polisario Front. Demonstrations and riots by supporters of independence and or a referendum broke out in the Moroccan-controlled parts of Western Sahara in May 2005 and in parts of southern Morocco. They were met by police. Several international human rights organizations expressed concern at what they termed abuse by Moroccan security forces, and a number of Zarawi activists have been jailed. Pro-independent Zarawi sources, including the Polisario, have given these demonstrations the name Independence Intifada, while most sources have tended to see the events as being of limited importance. International press and other media coverage has been sparse, and reporting is complicated by the Moroccan government's policy of strictly controlling independent media coverage within the territory. Demonstrations and protests still occur, even after Morocco declared in February 2006 that it was contemplating a plan for devolving a limited variant of autonomy to the territory but still explicitly refused any referendum on independence. As of January 2007, the plan had not been made public, though the Moroccan government claimed that it was more or less complete. Polisario has intermittently threatened to resume fighting, referring to the Moroccan refusal of a referendum as a breach of the ceasefire terms but most observers seem to consider armed conflict unlikely without the green light from Algeria, which houses the Zarawi's refugee camps and has been the main military sponsor of the movement. In April 2007, the government of Morocco suggested that a self-governing entity, through the Royal Advisory Council for Saharan Affairs, should govern the territory with some degree of autonomy for Western Sahara. The project was presented to the UN Security Council in mid-April 2007. The stalemating of the Moroccan proposal options has led the UN in the recent report of the UN Secretary-General to ask the parties to enter into direct and unconditional negotiations to reach a mutually accepted political solution. In October 2010 Godemizic camp was set up near al Ayan as a protest by displaced Zarawi people about their living conditions. It was home to more than 12,000 people. In November 2010 Moroccan security forces entered Gadamizic camp in the early hours of the morning, using helicopters and water cannon to force people to leave. The Polisario Front said Moroccan security forces had killed a 26-year-old protester at the camp, a claim denied by Morocco. Protesters in Lyon threw stones at police and set fire to tires and vehicles. Several buildings, including a TV station, were also set on fire. Moroccan officials said five security personnel had been killed in the unrest. On November 15, 2010, the Moroccan government accused the Algerian secret services of orchestrating and financing the Gadamizic camp with the intent to destabilize the region. The Spanish press was accused of mounting a campaign of disinformation to support the Sahawi initiative and all foreign reporters were either prevented from travelling or else expelled from the area. The protest coincided with a fresh round of negotiations at the UN. Politics Sovereignty over Western Sahara is contested between Morocco and the Polisario Front and its legal status remains unresolved. The United Nations considers it to be a non-self-governing territory. Formally. Morocco is administered by a bicameral parliament under a constitutional monarchy. The last elections to the parliament's lower house were deemed reasonably free and fair by international observers. Certain powers, such as the capacity to appoint the government and to dissolve parliament, remain in the hands of the monarch. The Morocco-controlled parts of Western Sahara are divided into several provinces that are treated as integral parts of the kingdom. The Moroccan government heavily subsidizes the Saharan provinces under its control with cut-rate fuel and related subsidies, 
to appease nationalist dissent and attract immigrants from Zaraois and other communities in Morocco proper. The exile government of the self-proclaimed Zarawi Arab Democratic Republic is a form of single-party parliamentary and presidential system, but according to its constitution, this will be changed into a multi-party system at the achievement of independence. It is presently based at the Tinf refugee camps in Algeria, which it controls. It also controls the part of Western Sahara to the east of the Moroccan Wall, known as the Liberated Territories. This area has a very small population, estimated to be approximately 30,000 nomads. The Moroccan government views it as a no-man's land patrolled by UN troops. The SADR government whose troops also patrol the area have proclaimed a village in the area, Berlaylaw, as SADR's provisional capital. Human Rights The Western Sahara conflict has resulted in severe human rights abuses, constantly reported by external reporters and HR activists, most notably the displacement of tens of thousands of Zarawi civilians from the country, the expulsion of tens of thousands of Moroccan civilians by the Algerian government from Algeria, and numerous casualties of war and repression. During the war years, both sides accused each other of targeting civilians. Moroccan claims of Polisario terrorism has generally little to no support abroad, with the U.S., EU, AU and UN all refusing to include the group on their lists of terrorist organizations. Polisario leaders maintain that they are ideologically opposed to terrorism, and insist that collective punishment and forced disappearances among Zarawi civilians should be considered state terrorism on the part of Morocco. Both Morocco and the Polisario additionally accuse each other of violating the human rights of the populations under their control. In the Moroccan-controlled parts of Western Sahara and the Tindf refugee camps in Algeria, respectively. Morocco and organizations such as France Liberté Copyright S consider Algeria to be directly responsible for any crimes committed on its territory, and accuse the country of having been directly involved in such violations. Morocco has been repeatedly criticized for its actions in Western Sahara by international human rights organizations such as Amnesty International. Human Rights Watch, World Organization Against Torture, Freedom House, Reporters Without Borders, International Committee of the Red Cross Union High Commissioner for Human Rights, DRECO's Human Rights, Defend International, Frontline, International Federation of Human Rights, Society for Threatened Peoples, Norwegian Refugee Council, Polisario has received criticism from the French organization France Liberts on its treatment of Moroccan prisoners of war and on its general behavior in the tinned refugee camps in reports by the Belgian Commercial Counseling Society ESISC, or European Strategic Intelligence and Security Center. A number of former Polisario officials who have defected to Morocco accuse the organization of abuse of human rights and sequestration of the population in TINF. Administrative Divisions, Zarawi Arab Democratic Republic, Wailawa, Daera, Moroccan regions and provinces, three Moroccan regions are within or partly within Western Sahara, Gurlmim is Samara region, is Samara province. Lourdes and Yan Bouda Sakia El Hamra region, Bouda province, Lourdes and Yan province. Uded Dahab Lagoira region, Ozerd province, Uded Dahab province. Morocco controls territory to the west of the Berm while the Zarawi Republic controls territory to the east. Dispute the Western Sahara was partitioned between Morocco and Mauritania in April 1976, with Morocco acquiring the northern two-thirds of the territory. When Mauritania, under pressure from Polisario guerrillas, abandoned all claims to its portion in August 1979, Morocco moved to occupy that sector shortly thereafter and has since asserted administrative control over the whole territory. The official Moroccan government name for Western Sahara is the Southern Provinces, consisting of the Rao de Oro and Zagulia El Hamra regions. The portion not under the control of the Moroccan government is the area that lies between the border wall and the actual border with Algeria. The Polisario Front claims to run this as the free zone on behalf of the SADR. The area is patrolled by Polisario forces, and access is restricted, even among Zarawis, due to the harsh climate of the Sahara the military conflict and the abundance of landmines. 
Landmine Action UK undertook preliminary survey work by visiting the Polisario controlled area of Western Sahara in October 2005 and Fabrulia Euro March 2006. A field assessment in the vicinity of Berlala, Tafaratai and the berms revealed that the densest concentrations of mines are in front of the berms. Mines were laid in zigzags up to one meter apart, and in some parts of the berms, there are three rows of mines. There are also berms in the Moroccan-controlled zone, around DAKHLA and stretching from Bauda, including Smera on the Moroccan border. However, mine laying was not restricted to the vicinity of the berms. Occupied settlements throughout the Polisario-controlled areas, such as Bernala and Tafaratai, are ringed by mines laid by Moroccan forces. Despite this, the area is travelled and inhabited by many Zarawi nomads from the tinned refugee camps of Algeria and the Zarawi communities in Mauritania. United Nations Minmeso forces are also present in the area. The Union forces oversee the ceasefire between Polisario and Morocco agreed upon in the 1991 settlement plan. The Polisario forces in the area are divided into seven military regions, each controlled by a top commander reporting to the president of the Polisario proclaimed Zarawi Arab Democratic Republic. The total size of the Polisario's guerrilla army present in this area is unknown, but it is believed to number a few thousand men, despite many combatants being demobilized due to the ceasefire. These forces are dug into permanent positions, such as gun emplacements, defensive trenches and underground military bases, as well as conducting mobile patrols of the territory. Major Zarawi political events, such as Polisario Congresses and sessions of the Zarawi National Council are held in the Free Zone, since it is politically and symbolically important to conduct political affairs on Zarawi territory. In 2005, Minmeso lodged a complaint to the Security Council of the United Nations for military maneuvers with real fire which extends to restricted areas by Morocco. A concentration of forces for the commemoration of the Sahrawi Republic a Euro unregistered trademark S 30th anniversary were however subject to condemnation by the United Nations, as it was considered an example of a ceasefire violation to bring such a large force concentration into the area. In late 2009, Moroccan troops performed military maneuvers near Umdriaga, in the exclusion zone, violating the ceasefire. Both parties have been accused of such violations by the UN, but to date there has been no serious hostile action from either side since 1991. Annual demonstrations against the Moroccan wall are staged in the region by Zarawis and international activists from Spain, Italy, and other mainly European countries. These actions are closely monitored by the UN. During the joint Moroccan Euro Mauritanian control of the area, the Mauritanian controlled part, roughly corresponding to Sakia El Hamra, was known as Tyrus Al Abilia. Geography Western Sahara is located in northern Africa, bordering the North Atlantic Ocean, between Mauritania and Morocco. It also borders Algeria to the northeast. The land is some of the most arid and inhospitable on the planet. The land along the coast is low, flat desert and rises, especially in the north. To small mountains reaching up to 600 meters on the eastern side. While the area can experience flash flooding in the spring, there are no permanent streams. At times a cool offshore current can produce fog and heavy dew. Economy Aside from its rich fishing waters and phosphate reserves Western Sahara has few natural resources and lacks sufficient rainfall and freshwater resources for most agricultural activities. The territory has one of the world a Euro unregistered trademark s largest reserves of phosphate deposits located in Boukro which is owned by the office de Refindes Phosphates, a Moroccan state agency. There is speculation that there may be offshore oil and natural gas fields, but the debate persists as to whether these resources can be profitably exploited, and if this would be legally permitted due to the non-self-governing status of Western Sahara. Western Sahara's economy is based almost entirely on fishing and phosphate mining which employs two-thirds of its workforce. Some lesser extent agriculture and tourism also contribute to the territory's economy. Most food for the urban population comes from Morocco. All trade and other economic activities are controlled by the Moroccan government. As its de facto southern province, 
the government has encouraged citizens to relocate to the territory by giving subsidies and price controls on basic goods. These heavy subsidies have created a state-dominated economy in the Moroccan-controlled parts of Western Sahara. Recently leaked United States diplomatic cables reveal that the territory is somewhat an economic burden for Morocco. The Moroccan 800 million US dollars subsidy program to Western Sahara was said to be one of the largest per capita aid programs in history. Supporting life in a territory with scarce fresh water resources is extremely costly. For example, the entire drinking water for the city of Lyon comes from desalinization facilities and costs 3 US dollars per cubic meter but is sold at the national price of 0.0275 US dollars. The difference is paid for by the government of Morocco. Fuel is sold at half the price, and basic goods are heavily subsidized. Businesses operating in the territory do not pay taxes. All of this is done to keep the balance of Western Sahara's finances. The territory is otherwise thought to be economically unviable and unable to support its population without the Moroccan subsidies. The cable concluded that the territory is unlikely to ever be of any economic benefit for Morocco even if offshore oil fields were to be discovered and exploited. Due to the disputed nature of Moroccan sovereignty over the territory, the application of international accords to Western Sahara is highly ambiguous. Political leadership of trade agreements signatories such as the United States and Norway have made statements as to these agreements non applicability a euro although practical policy application is ambiguous. Exploitation of natural resources After reasonably exploitable oil fields were located in Mauritania, speculation intensified on the possibility of major oil resources being located off the coast of Western Sahara. Despite the fact that findings remain inconclusive, both Morocco and the Polisario have signed deals with oil and gas exploration companies. U.S. and French companies began prospecting on behalf of the Moroccan Office National de Recherches et Euro unregistered trademark exploitations Petrolia Res. In 2002, Hans Coral, Under Secretary General of the United Nations and head of its Office of Legal Affairs, issued a legal opinion on the matter. The opinion was rendered following an analysis of relevant provisions of the Charter of the United Nations, the United Nations General Assembly Resolutions, the Case Law of the International Court of Justice and the Practice of Sovereign States. It concluded that while the existing exploration contracts for the area were not illegal, if further exploration and exploitation activities were to proceed in disregard of the interests and wishes of the people of Western Sahara they would be in violation of the principles of international law. After pressures from corporate ethics groups, Total SA pulled out in late 2004. In May 2006, the remaining company Kerr McGee also left following sales of numerous shareholders like the National Norwegian Oil Fund, due to continued pressure from NGOs and corporate groups. The European Union fishing agreements with Morocco include Western Sahara. In a previously confidential legal opinion, the European Parliament Euro Unregistered Trademark S Legal Service opined that fishing by European vessels under a current Euro Euro Morocco fishing agreement covering the Western Sahara Euro Unregistered Trademark S waters is in violation of international law. Similarly, the exploitation of phosphate mines in Bukhara has led to charges of international law violations and divestment from several European states. Demographics The indigenous population of Western Sahara is usually known in Western media as Zaroyes. But they are also referred to in Morocco as Southerners, or Southern Berbers. They are Hassanir speaking or Berber speaking tribes of Berber origin. Many of them have mixed Berber Arab heritage, effectively continuations of the tribal groupings of Hassanir speaking and Zinaga Berber speaking Moorish tribes extending south into Mauritania and north into Morocco as well as east into Algeria. The Zaroys are traditionally nomadic Bedouins with a lifestyle very similar to that of the Tuareg Berbers from whom Zaroys most likely have descended, and they can be found in all surrounding countries. War and conflict has led to major population displacement. As of July 2004, an estimated 267,405 people lived in the Moroccan-controlled parts of Western Sahara. Many people from parts of Morocco have come to live in the territory, 
and these latest arrivals are today thought to outnumber the indigenous Western Sahara Zaroyes. The precise size and composition of the population is subject to political controversy. The Polisario controlled parts of Western Sahara are barren. This area has a very small population, estimated to be approximately 30,000 in 2008. The population is primarily made up of nomads who engage in herding camels back and forth between the Tindferia and Mauritania. However, the presence of mines scattered throughout the territory by the Moroccan army makes it a dangerous way of life. Spanish census in Minaso, a 1974 Spanish census claimed there were some 74,000 Zaroris in the area at the time, but this number is likely to be on the low side, due to the difficulty in counting a nomad people, even if Zaroris were by the mid-1970s mostly urbanized. Despite these possible inaccuracies, Morocco and the Polisario Fund agreed on using the Spanish census as the basis for voter registration when striking a ceasefire agreement in the late 1980s, contingent on the holding of a referendum on independence or integration into Morocco. In December 1999, the United Nations Minaso mission announced that it had identified 86,425 eligible voters for the referendum that was supposed to be held under the 1991 settlement plan and the 1997 Houston Accords. By eligible voter the UN referred to any Zarawi over 18 years of age that was part of the Spanish census or could prove their descent from someone who was. These 86,425 Zaroyes were dispersed between Moroccan-controlled Western Sahara and the refugee camps in Algeria, with smaller numbers in Mauritania and other places of exile. These numbers cover only Zaroyes indigenous to the Western Sahara during the Spanish colonial period, not the total number of ethnic Zaroyes, who also extend into Mauritania, Morocco and Algeria. The number was highly politically significant due to the expected organization of a referendum on self-determination. The Polisario has its home base in the Tindf refugee camps in Algeria, and declares the number of Zarawi population in the camps to be approximately 155,000. Morocco disputes this number, saying it is exaggerated for political reasons and for attracting more foreign aid. The Union uses a number of 90,000 most vulnerable refugees as basis for its food aid program. Culture The major ethnic group of the Western Sahara are the Zarawis, a nomadic or Bedouin ethnic group speaking the Hassan Ayyar dialect of Arabic, also spoken in much of Mauritania. They are of mixed Arab Berber descent, but claim descent from the Beni Hussein, an Arab tribe that have migrated across the desert in the 11th century. Physically indistinguishable from the Hassanir speaking Moors of Mauritania, the Zarawi people differ from their neighbors partly because of different tribal affiliations and partly as a consequence of their exposure to Spanish colonial domination. Surrounding territories were generally under French colonial rule. Like other Saharan Bedouin and Hassanir groups, the Zarawis are mostly Muslims of the Sunni branch and the Maliki Fiqh. Local religious custom is like other Saharan groups, heavily influenced by pre-Islamic Berber and African practices, and differs substantially from urban practices. For example, Zarawi Islam has traditionally functioned without mosques in the normal sense of the word, in an adaptation to nomadic life. The original clan-slash-tribe-based society underwent a massive social upheaval in 1975 when the war forced part of the population to settle in the refugee camps of Tinth, Algeria, where they remain. Families were broken up by the dispute. The Museum of the Zarawi People's Liberation Army is located in this refugee camp. This museum is dedicated to the struggle for the independence of Western Saharan people. It presents weapons, vehicles and uniforms, as well as abundant documentation history. Cross-cultural influence the contemporary history of the territory has experienced long-term international presence and occupation that has deeply influenced the cultural practices of the people, such as languages spoken throughout the territory and its institutions. Spanish colonization lasted roughly from 1884 to 1976, following the creation of the Madrid Accords where Spain absolved all responsibility over the territory and left it to Morocco and Mauritania. Throughout the nine decades of Spanish colonial presence, one of the primary spoken languages in the Western Sahara came to be Spanish. 
The reasons for its widespread usage was due to the necessity of communicating with Spanish leadership and administrators throughout the territory, whom ultimately established institutions modeled after those of Spain. The importance and prevalence of Spanish has persisted to the present day, even after Spanish withdrawal from the Western Sahara in 1976, due to various education exchanges and host programs for Zarawi children to Spain and Cuba. One such exchange program to Spain is Vacations en Paz, which is an annual holiday program that was created in 1988 and is organized by the Union of Zarawi Youth in collaboration with 300 other associations throughout Spain. The program itself allows 7,000 to 10,000 Zarawi children between the ages of 8 and 12 the opportunity to live in Spain for the summer outside of the refugee camps. Sometimes children return to the same Spanish household year after year while they are still eligible, and forge strong relationships with their host families. These types of exchange programs that successfully create cross-border and cross-cultural relationships reinforce the usage of the Spanish language throughout subsequent generations of Zarawi children. Gender Relations Much Spanish literature and recent refugee studies scholarship has been dedicated to the exploration of the major role women play in Zarawi society, and the degree of freedom they experience within the occupied territory and the refugee camps. There is a consensus among Zarawi women that they have always enjoyed a large degree of freedom and influence within the Zarawi community. Traditionally, Zarawi women have played pivotal roles in Zarawi culture, as well as in efforts to resist colonialism and foreign interference in their territory. Similar to other nomadic traditions on the African continent, Zarawi women traditionally exercise significant power and occupied leadership roles both in the camp and in their tents. Women were present, and at times dominant, in both the public and private spheres of Zarawi life. Zarawi women could inherit property, subsist independently from their fathers, brothers, husbands, and other male relatives. Women were key for establishing alliances through marriage, being that the Zarawi culture values monogamy, with their tribe and to others. Furthermore, Zarawi women were endowed with major responsibility for the camp during long periods of absence by the men of the camp due to war or trade. Among the responsibilities women had were setting up, repairing, and moving the tents of the camp, and participating in major tribal decisions. In the contemporary history of the Western Sahara, women have occupied central roles and been highly represented in the political sphere. During Spanish colonial rule, Zarawi women actively provided financial and physical support to the resistance movements during the 1930s, 50s, and the late 1960s. In more official ways, women were consistently part of the Zarawi National Liberation Movement, otherwise known as the Frente Polisario, which in 1994 created the National Union of Zarawi Women. The NUSW was structured at the local, regional, and national levels and concentrated on four areas the occupied territories and emigration, information and culture, political and professional development, and foreign affairs. Art and Cultural Expression FI Sahara International Film Festival is an annual film festival that takes place in one of the southwestern refugee camps in Algeria. At this event, actors, directors, and film industry insiders from around the world join the Zarawi people for a week-long festival of screenings, parallel activities and concerts. The festival provides entertainment and educational opportunities for Zarawi refugees alongside cultural celebrations for visitors and spectators. It aims to raise awareness of the humanitarian crises in the refugee camps, and expose the Zarawi people to this medium of art and expression. Highly renowned Spanish filmmakers and actors, such as Javier Bardem, Penelope Cruz, and Pedro Armoda Cubed Va have supported and attended the festival. In 2013, the festival screened over 15 films from around the world including comedies, short films, animations, and documentaries. Some of the films were made by the refugees themselves. Art as embodied in film has been a strong and popular medium that Zarawi youth have used to express themselves, and share their stories of conflict and exile. Art of Faratai, the International Art and Human Rights Meeting in Western Sahara, is an annual art workshop set up in the Liberated Zone and Refugee Camps, specifically in Tafaratai, 
that brings artists from all over the world. This event led to the introduction of graffiti art to the camps, and popular graffiti artists have come to the workshop to work with refugees. One such artist was Spanish street artist Meza, who traveled to the Zarawi refugee camps in 2011 and displayed his own graffiti throughout the landscape. His canvases of choice were destroyed walls, which he brought back to life through his art. Meza inspired other Zarawis to express themselves and embody their national struggle through art and graffiti. One such artist is Muhammad Syed, a Zarawi artist that has been transforming the refugee camp landscape by creating works of art amongst the devastation in camps that have existed for four decades. His canvases, much like Meza, are walls that have been ruined by massive floods in the Zarawi refugee camps in southwestern Algeria. Syed's work tells a consistent story, one that draws on his experience of protracted conflict and a life under Moroccan occupation. Syed's graffiti depicts aspects of Zarawi culture, and includes actual Zarawi people as his subjects. References See also Notes References Sources and further reading, Hodges, Tony. Western Sahara, The Roots of a Desert War. Lawrence Hill Books. ISBN A 0 88208 152 7. Jensen, Eric. Western Sahara Anatomy of a Stalemate. International Peace Studies. ISBN A 1 58826 305 3. Patsanita, Anthony G. Hodges, Tony. Historical Dictionary of Western Sahara. Scarecrow Press. ISBN A 0 8108 5 Shelley, Toby. Endgame in the Western Sahara, What Future for Africa's Last Colony? Z Books. ISBN A 1 84277 341-0 Janos, Biseno. Western Sahara. Par Copyright CS, Publicon Publishers. ISBN A 978-963-88332-0-4 External links, general information, country profile from BBC News. Western Sahara Entry at the World Factbook, Western Sahara at DMOZ, Wikimedia Atlas of Western Sahara, United Nations, the United Nations Mission for the Referendum in Western Sahara. Minmaso deployment map as of February 2009. Reports of the UN Secretary General, Human Rights, Human Rights in Morocco and Western Sahara, Amnesty International. Human Rights in Morocco and Western Sahara, Human Rights Watch. The Zarawi Association of Victims of Grave Human Rights Violations Committed by the Moroccan State, Association for the Families of Zarawi Prisoners and the Disappeared. Other links. News headline links from allafrica.com. Western Sahara, Landmine Monitor Report 2008, Jacob Mundu a Euro seized of the matter. The Union and the Western Sahara Dispute a PDF. Western Sahara Online, Sahara Press Service.